people from Indonesia that would ask for like pictures of my socks. Do you ever get that? No. Uh, no I, <laughs> yeah. I get like when I was like 13 years old, that was like the number one Facebook message my mom like would get. Hey, I'm Derek Fox, and you're listening to A Bunch of Losers. R.U. is my guest today, runner-up of MasterChef Junior Season 1. We go behind the scenes of being a MasterChef Junior, discuss navigating the industry family and surviving the pandemic. Let's go, loser. Wait till you hear your voice in these mics. Ooh. Ooh, right? Ooh. Ooh. I feel like I'm, ra- I'm like my radio show. Yeah, your own show. My own show. As this you know, it. sorry, it's Derek's show. Yeah, this is, uh, this is my show, but yeah. it's your show, too. It's our show. My show doesn't work without you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if this goes well, maybe we hey. just maybe maybe you're my co-host. We just take, take it on the road. Mm. Yeah, that's the nice thing about this is you don't have to take it on the road. That's true. The road's hard. Have you gone out and done the yeah, road? Yeah, but if thing? you're on the road, no, I haven't. I, yeah, you're a rock star. I haven't. Formally. I haven't really done the road. The, the road. It actually worked. You know what's funny is it worked really well after Master Chef, uh, after my season aired. Yeah. When I started getting phone calls because I didn't know what to do. People, people have no idea. We, we come off this show, yeah, and everyone's like, "Come cook for me," or "Can I book you?" "Can I book you?" And you're like, "How much do I charge you?" Right? Yeah, that's like the big. I'm like, <laughs> you're telling the girl who was 12 years right. old, right? <laughs> but that's the thing. I might yeah. as well have been 12 yeah. years old. Yeah. I have no fucking idea. Yeah. The they don't only, help you. No, they don't <laughs> no help one you. Helps no you. one helps you. <laughs> I almost want to start a whole entity of, of helping people when they come off of these shows because there is a lot you can do and i mean shit i made it out of nothing yeah but the one thing i had in my advantage is i knew how to tour and so when all these people hit me up i would book i would book in like like say someone books me in florida Mm -hmm. like we want you to come do this dinner on blah 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 like cool i booked that but i would tell them you got to fly me in a week before and I wanted to leave a week after. And then I would go on social media and be like, I'm gonna be at yeah. this, I'm gonna be in this city this time. Book me, book me, book me. And then I would, I'd fill it up. And then yeah. I would do that in different cities and and it was like hitting the road. But I, I just treated I tr- I literally treated it like a band member. And it worked well, great. Maybe I'll be but you know, hitting okay. you up being like so that's, how do I go on the road? Yeah. No, you're <laughs> I'll tell you. No, but so okay, so tell me that. You're twelve years old. Yes. Yeah, we're going to jump ahead and we'll go okay. back. But you're 12 years old. You're runner up Master Chef. So I know exactly what this fucking feels like. Yeah. You're sitting runner there. Runner up gang. Runner up gang. And you've so you've put your heart onto every plate. You're also 12. Yes. I don't even I can't even wrap my head around that part cuz I know I know the emotional toll it took on me being in that arena. And in front of those judges who I idolized and still do. And then you're standing there and they don't say your name. Yeah. It goes the other way. No, it's definitely tough. And as a 12-year-old girl, like, <laughs> and standing, I mean, it, it was very interesting because it was like, I went through this whole experience, really not know. It was my first time, like, ever on TV and... For most people. I mean, yeah, obviously. And, like, I mean, growing up in L.A., I did do, like, audit commercial kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, your mom... Your mom... My mom, you know. you around. Yeah, you know, I was a cute little Asian girl, you know. Why not? We're a, we're, if, a, we're a gem in the city. If I had a cute little Asian girl, I'd audition her, too. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Babe, we're uh, adopting a cute Asian girl. Dara says it works. Uh... Well, I didn't say it works. So I never really booked anything, but we did it. <laughs> the times have changed. The times have changed. Yes, but anyways, uh, the show. Yeah, it. It's funny because people will ask me, like, especially you know, Master Chef, the the brand, and Gordon, and you know, they must. They always say the first thing they're like, "Oh my gosh, that must have been so stressful, yeah. and like such a crazy experience." And for me, it was like. I'm sure it was. And the, 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 thing, the thing also with our season is we were the first season. We were a limited series. Right. So we only shot for three weeks. Whoa. Yeah. And because we were juniors, like we were- It was on, only four hours a day, right? Uh, they could only legally have you on set. We could le- only legally be uh, filming for three hours at a time. Right. So, and yeah, we had school and, but for me, like it was- like when I look back on it now, it's like I I just had fun. Like right. it was a but hold on, let's fun go back. Experience. So okay. a lot of people a lot of people don't know that 
when you're underage on a Hollywood set, I think any set in the country yeah. that's sanctioned, mm-hmm. you if you're underage, if you're in school, you have to do school on yeah. set. They bring in tutors, right? Yeah. So we had set teachers. Right. And every single, every day that we were like going to be on set, we had to do three hours of actually even days that we didn't film. Like any right. like school, like Monday school through day, Friday. Monday through exactly. Friday. Exactly. Uh, we had to do school for three hours a day uh, and, you know, 10 minute breaks every, I think, four or five hours. It was like, it's intense. And, you know, your set You're teacher, doing more school than you are filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, or essentially some days, the same amount. Some days, yeah. Like they would also bank hours of school, so sometimes we do school for like five hours, so that then we the could next film day, longer. No way! Yeah. I didn't know that. And also, like, you know how, like, on a lot of these shows, or for us, like on Master Chef, it was like our wranglers were the people that pulling us off offset and stuff. Our set teachers were like the union, like workers who like made sure it was like as soon as that three hours click, click, right. kids are Out. offset. And th- wow. they don't care about the directors or anything. Doesn't matter where nope. you are nope. in the filming. It was like offset. Wow. Yeah. So it what, was. What was the schooling like? Were they? I mean, were they teaching you math and geography and like, or were they just like read this book, give us a book report? So the teachers were more just like over the like set teacher wasn't actually teaching us. They were just like an overseer. Okay. Think of it as like study hall. So for me, it was like I or all the kids. We were doing our schoolwork assigned by our school ah. so i would like i mean so your school sends you with work yeah you do we'd the set work. up for work like obviously like my teachers and my the school didn't really know exactly what i was doing right because you can't tell them i can't tell them they don't want you like people don't even also know like uh, like i have a full-time private chef gig with someone that is probably worth as much if yeah. not more than gordon <laughs> ramsay yeah and I and they're like, don't tell them where you're going. I'm like, no, I'm telling them where yeah, I'm going. Yeah. But I'm for like, a school or like for my teachers, like I just had to tell them like, hey, like I'm have a family emergency. Like I, I don't know how long I'm going to be gone, but my teachers would just give me like a week's worth of school work to do. Uh, and, and then you call back and I'm like, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing with like these competition shows. You don't know how long you're going to be there no for. Idea. They told and me that when I packed for season six. They sent me an email, said, congratulations, you've made it to the next round. Yep. It's not on camera. You're going to a hotel with a hundred other contestants. A hundred people were in this hotel. Yeah. We had bunk mates. <laughs> I was sharing a room with another dude. And we were still, they're like, this is still the auditioning process. But you're leaving home. And if you make it on, you're, you're, not, you're, you're still going to be here. So they said, pack for minimum five days. Maximum three months. Yeah. Three months. Yeah. You were packing for three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. No. And that's the thing too. And I like realized with a lot of this Hollywood stuff, it's like, they don't, or at least the shows, it's like, they don't tell you you're on until you're on set yeah. and the cameras are rolling. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. You don't. And so, yeah, I mean, it's the uncertainty of it all. And especially mm-hmm. for like, I mean, I will say for juniors, there was like a little bit more clarity because there's like right, more moving juniors, parts. Yep. And, but still, like, it yeah. was always, it was like, it's almost hurry good up that, and wait. Well, that's Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it's almost good that you being 12 years old, you were like kind of naive to it, right? Like you weren't oh, really, 100%. you weren't really like worrying about the competition. It was more, was it more like summer camp vibes? Yeah. 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 I mean, summer camp with our parents there, but like. It I'm was. looking at everyone as like, <laughs> I have to send you yeah, home. I, yeah, we know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. With the kids, it's like, I mean, I, I come from like a competitive, like I had a competitive childhood, like okay. playing sports and stuff. So like, yeah, it's a competition. Yeah. But also like, no, we'd get back from set and go to the pool and like be at the pool for three hours. Like wow. it's fun. And yeah. it's, you know, the we had fun on set with the PAs and all the yeah. production people. Like, so it really felt like summer camp. It did. Yeah. We were just cook for cook and then serve it to Cooking Gordon Ramsay. Cooking for Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> summer camp. Yo, there are people, there are people out there that like go to culinary school that like their dream is to be Gordon Ramsay and just be even in his presence and you're there at 12 years old you're like yeah here's my whatever what is so when you tell me about audition yeah oh yeah I <laughs> just rack of it. lamb with oh my God. so we both auditioned with rack of lamb yes we both earned our aprons with rack of lamb well you guys kind of got given aprons and then had to compete to keep yeah. them yeah. but we both did rack of lamb Gordon both told us that he would serve it in his restaurant. Um, 
So I, I love that for us. Yeah. But y- you made, yeah, you got up there. We're jumping ahead a little bit. You got up there <laughs> and you got emotional. Oh my gosh. I'm to this day. Oh gosh. I'm the same way with success. <sighs> like, you know, when you did something good. Yeah. If fe- it's a build up. Also, yeah. what I, I think also like. It's about being present. For, it's about being present. But also like what people don't understand about these TV shows is like. The amount of like pressure and stress that you're under, not even just from the cooking, the yeah. timing, yeah. but everything, hair, makeup, yeah. wardrobe, like mm-hmm. all the preparation that goes into this like no idea where, one hour cook. Right. It's a one hour cook. We're getting to set. Or 45 if, minutes. Like, it, Yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> it's a one hour cook, but we get up at 4.35 a.m. Yeah. Well, kids are a little different, but yeah. Kids anyway. are a little different. But, but still. A, yeah, it's so much pressure. And that one hour cook is mm-hmm. actually a 12 hour day. Yeah. So it's but like. But that one hour is real. Yeah, completely it, real. And it goes so fast. So when Sometimes you, I'm even questioning because we don't have, we don't have our phones. We don't yeah. have a stopwatch. They take all of our watches off. Sometimes I wonder, is that clock actually yeah, faster? Yeah, your eyes aren't actually like glued yeah. on it. No, but that's the thing. Like that's why all that emotion like builds it, up. It does. And like for me, I'm you just can't like, control I'm it. a very emotionally in yeah. touch person. Yeah. So like you're present. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. You know, I got, I well, got a emotional. I'm sitting on my couch. I remember. Okay. First of all, I remember watching your season and you actually, you've been cooking longer than I have <laughs> because your season one of MasterChef Junior aired before yeah. I ever auditioned for season six. But I remember watching your season and it, it was, I mean, God, the one little, the one little dude I, I'm drawing a Jack? Blank. Jack. Hawaiian oh, shirt. Oh my God. He was so <laughs> cute. I wonder what he what, what he's like now. Do you, he's at uh studying like economics at Northeastern or probably yeah. he, he seems no, no, like he is. <laughs> super smart kid. But uh, he was so cute. And I was just, just like yeah. <laughs> chopping away really <laughs> and fast. Sarah. So, okay. Oh, she yeah. was a firecracker. A firecracker to oh, say yeah. it nicely. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> just like that. But so you, you were super emotional and I, I like, and I connected with it and I, rem- and so I just rewatched it and like, like I'm sitting on my couch as a 35 year old dude, <laughs> just crying at your audition. Cause I know exactly what you're feeling. I, yeah. I feel that emotion ex- in success and connection. And like people are going to see this season, this is back to, I cry so much. <laughs> like, I, uh, thinking back because like obviously now I'm like reflecting on everything thinking back I'm like the number of times that I cried either on set or in interviews yeah. I'm like oh god I, how, yeah. how is it's this like going to be perceived right because right. like, you're like hold on uh, I know how it looks <laughs> but it hasn't been edited, edited. yet that's yeah. the thing and, and the thing is a lot of the time like a lot of questions that I got after juniors is like oh well like you know, have you seen the show? We don't see the show no. until it airs right. with everyone else. We don't get a we don't get a preview. And it's like no. that, I mean, that's what's exciting because it's like you want to hear what everyone else has to say about you. Yeah, I was I was actually <laughs> so there was one point where I was telling everyone I was going to get a, a a tattoo to commemorate like our experience, mm-hmm. and then I thought about it and I was like, wait, no, I need to hear everyone's interviews <laughs> first. <laughs> What the fuck did they say about me? 100%. 100%. Because I know they were talking shit about me. No. You know, I'm I'm that guy on the reality TV. It's like, I'm here to win. I'm not here to make friends. Although I end up making friends with everybody. Yeah. But we all, we, (laughs) trauma bond. Yeah. Trauma trauma buddies. Trauma Trauma buddies. (laughs) Yeah. But that's what it is. It's that, that emotion comes from like, I think we are all more emotional this time around because we know the trauma we know what it's yeah. like after and 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 i say trauma just because like it it's changing our trajectory 100% and we know it and and now we know what it does like we go on this show and like it changed my life i mean before i went on season 6 i i was i had like 500 dollars in my bank account I like I I didn't have a job. The band I was with was breaking up. Like everything was just like spiraling out Mm -hmm. of control. And before that, like just before that, I was like living in my friend's living room because that's what you do in LA. Yeah, it's five hundred bucks for his couch, and 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 I was waiting for a job to open up. My car got repoed. I'm like, I I had nothing, and I'm like, and I when I auditioned for Master Chef, uh, I was just like. It was just like a Hail Mary. Yeah. You know, it was like, I'm throwing this out there. I'm going to see what happens. I like to cook. And 
you know, I like I've watched every episode of MasterChef, and I was like, let's see what happens. And then, I, so, and a lot of people don't know this, so we get per diem on this show. Yeah. But I got let go from a job right before, and it was the first time I've ever been fired. And I, uh, I basically filed for unemployment, not knowing you have to like go in front yeah. of a judge to get unemployment. And so I like took a, a friend that's a lawyer. We we got suited up and we go to this thing. And this judge, this judge is like, "What? Like this is not like uh, this is not a movie. You don't need yeah. to be here like suited up like this." And then they sent you know some guy from the restaurant, and he just like didn't defend the case very well. And so the, the lady awarded me the highest level of unemployment, which was like four hundred and fifty dollars a week. If it wasn't for that unemployment, I would not have like made it through master chef and like that was like f- literally funding me to do this journey and uh you know but i didn't talk about that i didn't i didn't tell the screen that and and, yeah. and sometimes i wonder if the outcome would have been different if i if i shared that part of the story but but more than anything it was just like i i have nothing to go back to so i was like i gotta win this thing yeah. <laughs> and yeah. i tried really hard um i but, was in sixth grade yeah <laughs> it's a little different <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, w- I wish I was in sixth grade. Just like <laughs> that was my uh, pre master show story, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, but so when you auditioned, what sparked the audition? What what was like? Oh wow! What was the drive? Yeah. So I um I've always I've always loved food, cooking. Um, been in the kitchen like my whole life. My earliest memories are in the kitchen, and I I was a kid like. Thankfully, my, and fortunately, like my mom put me like in everything as everything camp as a kid, you know, I did everything and cooking camp was one of the things that I went to a cooking camp. Yeah. Like I started doing cooking camps when I was like kids these days. (laughs) So lucky. Um, I wanted to go to space camp and my parents never did that. My parents looked up to the price and they were like, yeah, right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I did, I did cooking camp and I did that for a few years and just really fell in love with it. And to be honest, like my true, like falling in love with cooking came from like watching Food Network. Right. And my mom and I used to after school play Chopped and she would like give me ingredients. I love and, your mom. <laughs> uh, shout out to Carol. Mm-hmm. And so we would like play Chopped and things like that. And then my mom got my mom got remarried in 2012 and I made her how, how wedding cake. Old, how old were you when she got divorced? Uh, <laughs> my well, she didn't get divorced. Uh, my dad passed away oh, when I was fuck. six. God, I'm such an <laughs> asshole. I knew no, it. It's okay. It's I was okay. just talking okay. about a divorce story before. Yeah, no, no, so no. We, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. But I'm an asshole. No, no, it's all good. Um, yeah, so my mom got remarried and like, and then my stepdad works, is like an actor and works in entertainment and stuff. And so mm. my mom started doing commercial acting just as like a side job. She fell into it somehow and so she saw the open call for a kids cooking show on like backstage.com or whatever and she talked to my stepdad about it and was like you know like Dara loves cooking should we tell her about this like two weeks went by they didn't tell bring it up to me and then finally she asked me and I was like yeah like I want to do it like and she went back to bad backstage and the posting was gone gone shit so she spent she called like everyone yeah. at backstage, everyone, like she had one of the emails. So she like, and I, you know, I love my mom and she like, I'm so thankful for like momager right. to the max yeah. during those times of my year, right. uh, during those years. And so she found it and we like showed up to the open call. What was the, what was the dish that you brought? Did you have to bring a dish? No. So, uh, the open call, <laughs> actually it's a funny story. So, Finally found the post day. My mom finally found it. Uh, and she saw it was the open call, but that there had already been like a round of video audition. So people had already mm. post like sent in right. video. So she felt like you were behind. Yeah. So she was like, okay, the audition start. It, it was actually in like at a hotel in like Woodland Hills around here. And yeah. She was like, okay, the audition starts at nine. We're getting there at 7 a.m. because there's going to be lines. Like, it's a big production. It's like, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. So we got there the- before the production company <laughs> got there. We went up to the desk and we were like, hi, we're here for the like the open call audition. They were like, oh, yeah, that doesn't start till like nine. And we were like, 
okay. So, oh my gosh. but yeah, the first audition was, um, we like, it was very basic cooking skills. They just wanted to see, we went in groups of like 10 yep. and you cooked an egg, measured some water. They would tell you how much water to measure in a mm-hmm. Pyrex mm-hmm. and then cut a vegetable. Mm. And like, we brought the vegetable. <laughs> I brought a carrot. You brought uh, a carrot. Yeah. So did all that. And then we went Carrot's into like, easy a panel. Chop. Yeah. I can't remember. Like, if you want to, like, like, get, like, a dice out of a carrot, people don't, like, most people don't know how to do that. I mean, what are are they, the precision that they're, I think they just want to see if you can use a knife. They just want to make sure you're not going to cut your fingers off. Exactly. And then we went into, like, a panel room where all 10 kids were, like, standing in front of, like, the judges and casting directors and stuff like that. Ask us questions. Did they ask you a name? How many types of apples can you name? Yeah. So what they did (laughs) is they had, like, this, like, projector screen that they, like, put up, like, they'd. Basically, they like, would put up no an right, image. There's no of right a food. or wrong answer. Yeah, and they were like, "Just yell out who, like, if you know what it is, yell out what's on the screen." Because they want to see the kids who are gonna, you know, yeah. speak up. Yeah, and I remember that's more what it is, right? Yeah. It's the oh, kids they want to see the personality. Right. They want to see that like these kids have like you know they're mm-hmm. gonna go above and beyond. So like I remember, I don't know, such a vivid like core memory. I remember like there was like a Granny Smith. It was a Granny Smith apple, and I jumped <laughs> like as high as I could, put mm-hmm. my arm up, and I was like, "It's a Granny Smith apple!" And they were like all these other kids and, like, came down back to earth, yeah. looked around, and all these kids are like staring at me like, like "Yeah, duh." Oh gosh. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then the guy was like, "Nice, nice." nice. <laughs> <laughs> And we, I walked out of that room and they told us, uh, okay, we'll get back to you in the next two weeks. Mm. So we're like, okay, left. And on the drive home, we got they a call, call from a casting director. Hollywood is fast, yes, slow, no. Oh, yeah. And then I didn't actually cook until like the callback audition. So what'd you cook then? So I actually I made something that I had like made, come up with during right. my chopped games okay. with my mom. So I did like a trio of Christinis. I did one that was like a spiced blueberry compo. I did like a chili rub, coffee rub flank steak. And then I did like a like egg Christini. I don't even know what it was, oh but it was like goodness. three Christinis and it was like an, the first like on camera thing. And you were like so proud of this. <sighs> oh my gosh. It was you're look, And you look back at it and you're like, what the fuck what was I doing? But I will say I was proud. Like for yeah. a 12 year old to be making yeah. like of course. Chili rub steak, flam steak, Christini. I don't like... even think I've ever done a chili rub <laughs> steak. <laughs> but it was cool. You know, it, it was, and throughout that whole process, like, and I always say it like, for me, cooking was just like a hobby before I went on the show. It was yeah. something I did for fun after yeah. school, went yeah. to camp, like helped my mom and my grandma out in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And so that whole process was like obviously new and scary. Yeah. But also just like I went into it kind of just being like, okay, like let's just see, like let's have fun. Like yeah. this is just what I like to do for fun. Right, which is I think a little easier at 12 to – a little easier place to be <laughs> mentally, yeah. right? Because like you're – in sixth grade, you know, like next year's seventh grade, you know, right? Like your mom is going to take you to school. You know all this. Like I'm going into yeah. it like I don't, want at risk. I don't have a job. Yeah. I don't got any money. Like I don't even know why my girlfriend's with me right now. And I'm, I'm like, I, I can't go home without making it to the next yeah. round. And so there was a lot of pressure. So we got told, uh, bring, bring a dish. So I'll back up a little bit. I really wanted to uh, propose to Kim, but I had lost my job. I like I had been like looking at rings, and I was like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna audition for Chopped. I'm gonna go on Chopped. I'm gonna win ten grand real quick, and we go buy a ring." That was my idea. I emailed Chopped. I got nothing. I yeah. was like, "What am I doing? Why, why am I even? I, why am I even trying to go on Chopped? Like, Chopped doesn't want anything to do with me. Yeah. I've seen every episode of Master Chef." I'm, I should apply for MasterChef. So I, I go over the computer. I brew some coffee. I, I find I find the MasterChef casting website, and there's an email. And I send an email of, like, a, a dish and a photo of me playing drums and a bio. And I send it. I go grab my coffee. I put some cream. I go out to the patio. I'm like, you know what? I'm unemployed. I'm just going to enjoy this patio. And my phone rings. Oh, my gosh. That fast. This is guy Ned. He's like, "Hey, Derek, this is Ned from MasterChef," and I'm like, "Oh, hi." <laughs> You're like, "Oh." I'm like, "Wow, that was quick." He's like, "Yeah, we want to set you up with a VIP audition." I'm like, 
You got oh. VIP treatment. I got VIP treatment. Ooh. I got to skip the line. Uh, so he's like, here's a deal. We uh, we want you to come down and audition. It was like August something. And he's like, just cook a dish at home. Don't worry about the temperature. Just cook it and bring it. And I was like, okay. But the whole time, like I'm in my head about this. Yeah. Like too much time. If he would have called me the day before, yeah. <laughs> I'd have been like, no problem. I'll do that. But it, it was like, it, it was like, july he's telling me to come in august it was like there's all this time yeah and i'm all i'm thinking is no it's got to be hot like i can't serve him a cold dish uh, i should have just listened because i sab i almost oh, no. sabotaged myself so i did a i did seared scallops with a purple cauliflower puree roasted brussels sprouts and a white balsamic gastric mm. and i had this idea that i would get these uh these like um canteens mm. to retain heat and i was like they're circle <laughs> so i cooked the scallops and i dropped them in there not fucking thinking they're gonna continue oh, to cook no i had the most beautiful seared scallops like they looked amazing i dropped them in this canteen i screw the lid on i got the cauliflower puree in another canteen yeah. i got the brussels sprouts in another canteen i bring them i open them up and my just my heart just drops because they're just like shriveled yeah. little Dried scallops. God, well, they were really? moist because they kept all oh, the moisture oh. in, but they just were just, like they were just like, oh, they just looked so bad. And I'm like, this is not what I made. And so, but I'm like, and they tell you. So, what we had to do is there was like 50 people in the room, it was a big L shape that they made with a bunch of six by 10 tables mm -hmm. and all culinaries in the middle. And uh, they're like, okay, you have three minutes to plate your dish. Start now. And then you're like taking your dish out of oh the bag. Gosh. And so I'm opening it up and discovering that I've fucked myself and I got to plate this dish. And so then I, I just go for it. And then I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I'm so mad. But then I look next to me and this lady, oh no. <laughs> this lady plated a tuna salad sandwich with a Bud Light margarita. <laughs> and she, she was standing by it. Like she was so stoked. <laughs> and so proud. So proud. And I'm like, a Bud Light a bu margarita? <laughs> Hey, that you know probably makes some there's people a time, happy. And, place there's for a time that. and place maybe not master chef audition not master chef audition so i'm like okay well i definitely did better than that <laughs> but then they're coming by and i pull out my phone and i'm like look i yeah. tried to keep this hot and i was like this is what it looked like last night when i made it i was like i made it like this yeah. and they looked at it and they're like okay cool and then somehow i made it in they, so then they're taking our packets and they're piling them up in the middle and then they're like super like american idol like if we call your if we call your number oh my gosh you're on to the next round if we don't call your number thank you see you next year and i'm like oh my god so then they got this they got this pile of papers and they're all face down and they're lifting up and they're calling numbers and they're calling numbers and i'm like fuck and it's like all these numbers and none of them are mine and then the last one they called was mine and i was like oh fuck i made it to the next round and then i started thinking about it wait all the papers were upside down they picked mine first. And I was oh. like, oh. And then it clicked. I was like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. And then we went into the next round. We did the whole apple thing. They're like, name as many types of apples as you can name. And I'm like, fuck, okay. Yeah. Uh, gr Granny Smith. Granny Smith. <laughs> Red Delicious. Did you jump Fuji. up and down? I didn't and, do and, the jump. You know? No, but I cried. I cried. Oh, yeah. I cried while telling, telling you the You heard apples. it here first. Derek Fox <laughs> cried over apples. God, no. They, they knew. I started talking about my mom and oh. I started talking and it's just like, you know, my journey just, you know, everyone has a rough journey yeah. at some point or they go through something like you lost your yeah. your father. Like that's, that's traumatic. Like no one should have to go through that. But it's like, same thing. Like I lost, I lost my biological father without like really knowing him at like 13. And I had to go say bye to him. Yeah. But from five to 13, I never got to know him. So that was traumatic, you know? And it's like just so many things that lead up to those moments. And then when you're in those big, great moments, those emotions come out yeah. and you're not ready for them. And like, God, I would just cry. No. <laughs> if you've had a perfect life, don't audition for reality TV. No, they don't want that. <laughs> they they want, want that. They want the sob stories. They do. Yeah. Well, but the thing, the thing, the wild thing about reality TV is that most people have something yeah the people that want to go out for those shows that there's something that's there's driving meaning it. oh 100 yeah. percent. because you become like a risk taker yeah. i think and i will say going back like going back to you asked me like 
what was the passion and drive behind it. Like obviously my love for food. I mean, yeah. I always say my love of food came from my love of eating. Okay. And <laughs> I mean, I was a nine pound four, nine pound four ounce baby. Like I, I came out destined to like eat and like, you know, wow. Anyways. I don't even know what I was. <laughs> I was probably like six pounds. Yeah. You were small. It's my little bib. Wow, Dara. <laughs> Anyways, um, back to passion for food and all that. Another thing, like, obviously, being Asian American and, like, uh, there were, like, expectations for me. Yeah. Gr- and, like. Your culture is more, cl- is very strict with that. Yeah, very yeah. strict. And, but my mom really, and my dad, like, broke away from those standards Mm -hmm. and when my dad passed away I was six and do you mind if I ask why how yeah um yeah so my father was diagnosed with a rare four stage four uh lung cancer non-smokers lung cancer when I was three and he was given six to 12 months to live and he went through every experimental treatment he could uh and he lived until for three years so but he passed away in 2007 um when i was six so So sorry yeah it's it it's funny because it's like yes it's a very that's a very traumatic experience and like a really big life event for a young person to go through uh it happened and i think that a lot of things that have happened in my life after that like I, I would have only been I, I I was only able to get through them because of that of right. that happening in my yeah, life. Yeah. And one thing was like my mom, my dad told because it was a long time coming, like my mm-hmm. dad told my mom, like, let the I have an older sister, just me and my sister, and my dad said, like, let the girls do whatever they love. Yeah. Like he was an architect. He followed his passion. He like he was one of the youngest architects to like win, you know, these big awards and stuff. And like he was just like, let them follow their passion and they'll do good. Yeah. And so that's another thing, like with my cooking and going on these competitions, going on MasterChef, it was like, I'm doing this because I want to make him proud. Like, yeah. he loved, he loved architecture. He followed his dreams. Like, that's what he did. I love food. And this is the path that I, the opportunity I have presented right now. Why not? Let's see where it goes. And yeah, <clears throat> it was the right path because it's led me here now. And You're crushing it. You're yeah, it's it. crazy, but and I, you know, and I'm fortunate enough to have shared a kitchen with you now <laughs> and watch you work. You're a beast. I breathe really heavy. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. You're a beast. Um, I'll jump ahead because this this is gonna air after okay. the episode airs, but there's a moment where we're given a challenge, and it's to recreate a Gordon Ramsay dish. So. For everyone that's, you know, tuning in, Dara and I are now on this back to win MasterChef season. Yes. If I would have known there was going to be juniors there, I would not have showed up. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. That's how fucking so stupid I am. I'm like, I show up and they're I like. I think it was a last minute thought for production too. You do? Talking to all of, I mean, I don't know. It probably was like in the, in you know. I think they just didn't about. want the secret out. No, but. Like me, because we would all me talk and to Shane, each other. We didn't get contacted until like months after you guys did, right? Because what I'm saying is we oh, all talked to each mean. other, yeah. and they didn't want us to know that. Oh, I see what you mean. Maybe I don't know, but yeah. so anyway, we were there. <laughs> we get given. We're at a challenge. We're given. Christian is doling out the order of picks for desserts. It's all desserts. And I get picked last. You you got picked somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, middle. But you had your eye on that cake. You like picked that with with just yeah. certainty. <laughs> You're like, I'm not going home. Yeah, I'm freaking out. I, I I'm getting left with Gordon Ramsay's sticky toffee pudding. And fast forward, I'm crushing this sticky toffee pudding. You were right behind me too. I was right behind you, but I didn't look up. Yeah. I was, oh. I was determined to fucking nail this thing, and I'm crushed. I'm, I'm feeling good about it. I pulled them out of the oven. They're the same exact color as the demo sitting there. I got everything right. I have time to curl my or, my candied orange <laughs> peel. I was like, I'm getting the texture of this thing right, 
And they call time, and I, of course, you know, they call time, and I look up, and yeah, you're in front of me, and your cake looks fucking better than the demo. <laughs> I think everyone looked and was like, what the fuck? It was like, did, wait, no. No, because I'm, I was like, I'm, like supposed no, I'm, to, <laughs> I'm supposed to win this one. I was the last picked. I had a Gordon Ramsay dish. And now there's no way because I look forward and yours looks fucking amazing. I look back. Amanda's Amanda. looks fucking amazing. <laughs> and I look a little further and and Michael, his looks fucking amazing. Yeah. I'm like, God damn it. This is hard. This season is hard. And then, like you said, 45 minutes, we get given less time. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. No, it was. Yeah, that challenge was like. But you were, so what people don't know yeah. is you're fucking ultra prepared because the world ends, the pandemic hits, and what do you do? I'm in culinary school. <laughs> and? Oh, and my business? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started business doing deliveries. <laughs> Delivering what? Baked goods and yeah. cakes. <laughs> Baking cakes. You're well, selling, you're going door to door selling is, baked cakes. <laughs> so, so this is, I think, okay, so also, like, for the past advantage dara <laughs> no but this is the thing i was you so excited it. for that challenge yeah. because for the past five years all i've been doing is baking and pastry i went into master chef like i went into the competition back to win thinking i was at a disadvantage because i hadn't worked in like restaurants i hadn't really been cooking other than for myself for the past five years professionally i've been focused on baking and pastry so that well, clearly was it, my that's challenge. all you had to do. Amanda made four <laughs> cakes in a row and stuck around. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Well, I that was the thing though. Like going throughout the competition, I was like, I know I can rely on my baking skills. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do that. Like I want to push myself your, and but, challenge. And that was your ace. Like to you're, see, like you're com- like Christian has n- has no like Christian's scared of dessert. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. You're like, that's in my back pocket. I'm going to move forward. If yeah. a dessert pops up, you're like, I got this. Yeah. Except like the first mystery box, I made a dessert and completely messed, like screwed up. Wait, what was it? It was the junk food challenge. No, no, no. It wasn't was the junk the food. One. No, alcohol challenge. Mm, it, was yeah, the yeah. Al- it was the alcohol challenge. I did the dessert challenge. on that too. Yeah. I crushed it. I was so <laughs> mad I didn't get picked. I know. Well, I didn't. My like, car- this is a thing. Like, also, like go- getting back into them, and like, but when that's you a talk good time this, to fuck up when there's a lot what of I people. Realized. And that was like now th- looking back at the whole experience, it's like I, yeah, I, I, saved I my was dessert. able to like redeem myself yeah. with the cake yeah. because I completely messed up that first dessert I made, and yeah. I was so. But it was a mystery box, which I was happy about, so I, I wasn't picked. But well, there's also a lot of there's a lot of people that time, so and you're it's good. like you're getting used to being back in the kitchen, right? Under those time and pressure. Yeah, that was the hard. I think that was one of my most difficult challenges. Is was going back in because like before I was super naive and like I didn't care about technique. I didn't care yeah. about rules. And all of a sudden now I had this like new idea that rules mattered and and certain things mattered. And so that was all in my head and getting in my way to where like I would for I'd be like I would stop. I, I would not give time to even like looking for like where the tongs were because yeah. like there's the drawers were different. <laughs> and it was like no joke. I I was pulling vegetables out of boiling water at one point with your hands with my hands oh yeah right in front of joe i pulled a beet out of a pressure cooker the yeah. beets out of a pressure cooker and i peeled them with my bare hands yeah. because the adrenaline was so high i couldn't feel it like i just couldn't yeah. no and that the thing and we is also had like, 45 minutes <laughs> well the thing is for you like at least you had a a, a previous experience like similar to that i will say juniors yeah it's a lot completely different, different. It's a lot different right and so this was like my first time Ever well, in see, this and, type and of I setting. wish I didn't. I wish I didn't have it because I I felt like I made riskier decisions first time around mm. than this time. You were trying to play it more safe. I was like, trying to I was trying to play the game. I was trying yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like it was like for instance without giving away too much, I, I was just like this challenge. This is the best thing to cook. Yeah. I'm going to go this route because yeah. this is the best thing for the challenge. And sometimes that really works like it did. And then there was other times where it it was like, shit, I fucked up. Yeah. Um, I, I will say like I was. What? Sorry. No, no, no. You're good. What was the coming in? So, you know, you know, you're like, I'm a junior coming into this 
adult master chef like what was your game plan what it like what what are you thinking like what were you like most nervous about okay can i bring i'm gonna bring it back like yeah, bring it back a little bit okay so i i graduated from cia from culinary school gangster from- <laughs> At what class, age? Top of my class. Of course. <laughs> uh, at 20. Um, <laughs> yeah, how to put that in. Anyways. Do you know what I was doing at 20? <laughs> I was living yeah. in a in an RV, touring around the country, banging on drums, trying to hey, impress girls and eating gas station now. food. Look where you are now. It doesn't matter. Everyone has a different path. I could I be doing that at 35, you know? Like, who I'd knows? love to see I, I'd go to your concert. I'd drive the bus. You t- yes. Um, we're going on tour, but it's a you heard it here. tour. Yeah, but... So I graduated from school um, August 12th. I was supposed to move into my dorm at Cornell on August 20th. I got the email from MasterChef on August 16th. So my, and I had been mentally preparing myself to go to Cornell, to study hospital, like to be in school for four months. Like that was my plan for three, for the next three years, I'm going to be in school. Do you watch The Office? Yes, I don't know any. <laughs> <laughs> the number of memes I got sent when I told people I got in. But oh my god! So my com- my whole world was like completely upturned within four days. Yeah, and I had to wow make deci- these decisions because yeah, like, and there are two reality, amazing opportunities. Right. And reality TV does not care if you're about to change your whole oh, fucking life. No, they just want you on your show, yeah. on their show. Yeah. So. I did, I went back and forth, like, it was a very stressful week, Um, but it ended up working out. I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. It's, this is a once in a lifetime, well, second chance to, like, go back, redeem myself, and also, like. Because as a runner up, you're like, I want to. But to answer your question, like, I went in, my game plan was just to have fun, to be honest, because I, I had. I mean, I knew what to expect. I had, you know, to expect a little bit, but I just wanted to, de- like, I was going for the opportunity, yeah. for the experience, yeah. and to see what was going to happen. Yeah. And I think that that actually really did help me. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel you on that. I put on a I put on a face that I was really there to win, which we all, we all want to yeah, win. You know, yeah. But this time, I didn't have anything. I, I, I mean, the first time, I felt like, the first time I didn't have anything to lose because I didn't, physically didn't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> but I felt like everything was at stake that first time around because literally like it was like if I don't do well on this, I have nothing. And yeah. and I was really looking at it as like I have to win because I, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. So this time around, knowing what it does, and it's also like first time around, I didn't have like social media wasn't what it is now yeah. so the I'm, industry wasn't what it is nothing now. food has ch- everything like, has changed everything, so, yeah. so when this opportunity came out, i goes this is going to be amazing because i already know what tv what cooking on tv has done for me mm-hmm. i can't imagine what it's going to do this time yeah. around so i was really excited for that but of course i mean i'm competitive i want to win uh and i felt like i really felt like it was just written for me to win um but I, I really felt like, let me go back. Yeah. I, I really felt like when the opportunity pre- presented itself that I was like, I have to do this. Yeah. Like this is, this is mine to win. Yeah. And, but then I feel like, okay, we all feel that way. Right. But, uh, that's, you know, it's the nature of this beast. Oh, 100%. And that's the thing. It's like you, everyone goes into these competitions. I think just like a little bit naive yeah. to like anything that can happen because like, I mean, there's behind the scenes a little bit, but like, we're just thrown into situations and you can be the most, you can be the most prepared. Most prepared. And I mean, look at like Steven, like Like Steven is one of them. That was such a like shocker. Everyone. Yeah. To everyone. He's, he is the most prepared, most layered person. And for him to go out that quick? Yeah. Are you kidding? I thought I was going to be- set the tone. I thought I was going to be battling him week after <laughs> yeah. week after week. And I was like, wait, you're gone? Yeah. Because he was he was the only one I was worried about. So after we quarantined at the hotel and everything, mm-hmm. I had no idea who was going to be there. I like I was in 
I got picked up at the airport with one of the other juniors, with Tejo. And uh, that was right. the only person I knew who was there. Okay. Went to my room, four days, whatever. That yeah. first night when we went out and I saw people like... You saw all the I personalities? Saw, oh, yeah. Uh, three Wine Emily. <laughs> shout out. That was the first night I saw Three Wine Emily. <laughs> what do you mean Three Wine Emily? You don't know her, Three Wine Emily? No. Like when Emily, after Emily drinks three wines, she's like a completely different person. You guys dubbed her this? <laughs> I didn't oh no, even know she calls this. herself this. Oh gosh. You need to get three wine Emily on this. I gotta anyways. get, I'm, like, you gotta, I'm gonna line them up. Drink these yeah. three, then we'll talk. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, like that was like the, pe- I was meeting these people. But then I saw you. Okay, what'd you think? And I love perspective. Yeah, what did you think? So I was season one. So season one of Master Junior. I came Junior. in fucking rock and roll too. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, you can't, you, yeah. <laughs> Season one of MasterChef Junior aired right before season five. Okay. Um, oh, no, no, sorry. It aired, I think, right after four. Sorry. Anything like, something like that. And I really only watched, like, MasterChef up to, like, season seven. Okay. I feel like right after your season. Right. So I knew you. Yeah. And you were, like, one of the only people I knew, like, that was on the season 12 cast. And I to- when I told my mom, like, me and my mom were, like, big fan. Like, we wanted you to win. <laughs> So when I told my mom that you were there, she was like, oh, wow. Fuck. Like, right. She was like, wow. She, first, she was like, oh, my God, go talk to him. Like, <laughs> and I was like, I already have. <laughs> yeah. But no, I like I knew because I followed you on social media and I'd seen you what did? you've done. Yeah. Oh, I didn't I, like, I'd seen, like, I mean, we all Internet stalk, you know, so yeah. like I'd so seen what your did stuff. You think when and, I, like, what did you think when you went to my Instagram and everything was gone? Well, that was like, was that? That was like a few days after we got there, right? Because yeah. everything was still up. And I like, I remember I went and I, I was like, I think I, I texted you. I texted you and I was yep. like, why'd you take everything down? Exactly. And you were like, fresh start. Like, No, uh. I did it for that reason. I wanted to see who was looking <laughs> because I knew you. Would, I knew that whoever was looking would do that because, oh my God, I got like six texts. What happened to your Instagram? Instagram? <laughs> well, but that's a thing, like. We were all were trying to figure out like who's who and what yeah. they're doing and everything. And like I got DMs and I was like, who's this person? And I was like, oh, like mm. they're part of the cast yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, I was like, yeah, like Derek's going to be my biggest competition. Oh. And like, but and then, then I got but, but to then, know you right. and like we started cooking together, like in the kitchen and like. But then also hanging out in the green room and talking. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the thing is, like, like you said, like we're very similar. We're, we're both runner ups, like yep. our season, like, we cook the same thing. We I feel like father our issues. Energy, oh yeah, have, daddy yeah. issues. Um, I feel like our <laughs> our energies also are very similar. Yeah. And I like, and I told you this. Like, you were like a big brother to me throughout yeah. the whole competition. I was, I mean, yes, I was twenty. Like, I was twenty on the show, but everyone was. I mean, I, I was the youngest one af- after Shane was eliminated. So I was always like. Kind of the baby and but that's how my life has been in this industry i've yeah. always been the baby so i've always looked for mentors and, and like you were you were like one of the main well, people and, see, for that. and i can relate to that because everything that i did like baseball like i was four years old on my first baseball team everyone else was like six and like yeah. and i was the best one and then like high school comes around our band you know i'm 14 15 and we're winning we're winning the battle of the bands yeah. and it's like uh, everyone's like this kid and then i opened my first business at 25 and there were people that wouldn't believe me that it was my business yeah they're like this isn't yours and i'm like yeah i i designed this whole thing it was the first frozen first self-serve frozen yogurt food truck i designed it at 25 the yeah. whole thing the logo the the He's whole the concept and people are like <laughs> this isn't yours this isn't yours and i'm like yeah i yeah it drove me nuts so I mean, I can relate to you on that. So it, it was, it's actually nice f- to share that perspective with somebody who's living it because yeah. you're younger and crushing it. I also trusted you. I don't know if that was like a good thing or not, but like I did, I trusted you. Like yeah. I, I trust you. I, and I'm, I, I'm not and fake. I, I won't fake yeah. anything. And that's the thing. Like I realized because like people like off the bat kind of, and I don't remember, don't ask did. me like names, but like. People were like, oh, yeah, be wary of, like, Derek. He's playing the game. But this is the thing. Our first conversation was, like, you were telling – you you flat out said, like, this is what I'm here to do. This, you know, like, I'm going to play the game. But – and that's why I was, like, you were honest about it. And I was, like, a little wary of, wary of, like, oh, you know, is he saying things? But our conversations throughout the whole process, I was just, like – That – actually, that adds up a lot because I was, like – 
at when we like first kind of connected in the green room and then you you seem to be a little distant i'm like this is weird i'm like wh- why is everyone like this? it's like oh someone was walking around talking shit saying yeah, beware about yeah, Derek, yeah. fucking assholes ah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing also like for me my approach because i think like some people in the competition were like i'm not here to make friends i'm here to just cook and win my approach to it was like i want to be friends with everyone because yeah. Because there's At life the end after. Of the day, there's, life after. there's life after, and yeah. it's a competition. One person's gonna walk out of here, yeah. and it doesn't matter. I'd rather have twenty new friends than win. Right. But that's why I was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be nice to Derek. And I think the first thing that I like, we talked about dessert. Like you, you asked me about desserts, and I was talking to you, and I asked you questions about you know some a recipe or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we can trust each other. Like we're in this together. Yeah. And well, because like. You know, uh, I wasn't before I was like I, there was moments where I was intimidated, but then I was like, there's no reason to be intimidated by anybody because it's going to go how it goes. Exactly. It's like just focus on focus on your story, focus on what you want the world to see. And, I, you know, I, I think for this time around, I really played the game differently. I approached each challenge with an idea of what would be the best dish for this challenge. And then I wasn't going to, I'm not going to cook that protein again. Yeah. Like, you know how some people are like cooking the same thing again? Or the same mashed potatoes and protein. Right. Or a cake and a cake cake. and a cake. And I'm like, I'm not going to be that person. I'm like, you're, if we're, if I'm here for 20 episodes, you're going to get 20 different dishes. Cause I got that in me, you know? And, and so uh, that was my approach. Um, but you know it it's a lot of fun and i i'm yeah. excited for the world to see it oh i'm i'm itching and scratching yeah like yeah uh, it's it's hard to wait that's the hard part this, yeah. when okay so when you filmed master chef junior how long did you have to, did you have to wait for it to air we shot um april may okay. and it aired november not bad. So yeah, that was, that was, was about, about the same. Yeah, yeah, about the same. five months or whatever. Um, okay, so it's kind of good that you get this like redemption because for the last uh, eight years, your childhood has lived on the internet. Oh yeah. Right. How is yeah. that? Like, what's that like? like? It's interesting. I, you know, I. I've actually had a, a good experience. Yeah, I think all runner-ups end up having a good experience. Yeah, yeah. Because it's good for us. It is. And the opportunity, like, the, that's the thing. The yeah, opportunities yeah. that presented itself, like, I, yeah. n- I would have never been able, like, thought that that was going to When you go happen. home number 20, like. You have to work that much harder to even make it something. Yeah, it's So, hard. yeah, I mean, I was 12, and, you know, I'm going to, I. <laughs> It's funny. I look back now. Obviously, like I had this big red bow. I wore like My neon God. green pants and like ja- like jean jacket or okay, jean vest and like. I look you, back and I'm just like, oh my God, who let me walk into that store? And like, who like kept trying? Because oh. after Post Master Chef, you're the bow. The bow girl. The yes. bow girl. The bow who girl. pitched this? I'm embracing this to you? it. Um, I because it looked like <laughs> legit. It looked like you had a whole yeah. studio. I was the first. Jojo Siwa. I'm, I want to put that out there. What is that? Do you know who Jojo Siwa is? No. She's this girl who's like was on Dance Moms, and now she's like a multimillionaire because of her Jojo Bobos. What are I Jojo Bobos? Literally, they're just ribbon bows. Oh. That she's now. You did that first. Built. Yeah. <sighs> Look. But anyways, no. when you when you're a pioneer, <laughs> when you're paving the way, it's hard. It's hard. I did you the know? first self serve. Sometimes you don't get the credit where credit is due, but yeah. it's fine. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> but okay, but that's. <laughs> The bow girl, like you're yes. saying, I'm the, uh, I'm the bow girl. So, Dara the bow girl, like what is there's like what is that? So actually, okay, so the bow and like people don't know this, the bow is a Hello Kitty bow, right? I was obs- I grew up obsessed with Hello Kitty, like Hello Kitty everything, and when we like got on when I was going through the show and then finally got on, they were like send us wardrobe pictures and all the, all that stuff. I, it was like the year of the 50th anniversary of Hello Kitty. Jeez. And I had gone to this like Hello Kitty festival and got this bow. And my stepdad was like, oh, you should send that to them. And I was like, okay, like, sure, whatever. Oh, Thanks a lot, well, stepdad. <laughs> producers loved that. Yeah, he knew. And, oh, no, he knew. Like, yeah. it, they wanted, it became a thing. You said um, he was in the business, right? Yeah, no, like, they, 
And it was it was great. It became like, the thing. But what I'm trying to ask yes. is <laughs> when you're doing when you get pitched to do this little cooking show on YouTube. Mm, yeah, yeah. How it was like six six so, episodes, however many you okay. did. But yeah. they pitch it to you like you're gonna be the bow girl. Oh no, no, no. So those so after the show, post show, you know, we're on this I was on a three year exclusivity contract. Yeah, we all were. We all were. Um but my stepdad and I were like, I, I one thing that I came off the show and I still to this day am passionate about is teaching kids about food and cooking. And at that point, the most the obvious thing to do was do YouTube videos. Yeah. So my stepdad who is a jack of all trades, but knows a lot about video production and stuff. Okay. Um, we were like, let's make some videos. Okay. And so we completely remodeled our kitchen dining room. Your dad, your, your stepdad, stepdad made and this I, set. Yeah. So the wow, set that props my videos, to him. I thought Disney came no, in and did this. No, 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 no. <laughs> so my, the first, we just started shooting these videos and I think we shot, yeah, like six or seven interviews and, or sorry, videos. Some were interviews with chefs, some were cooking videos. We, completely self-produced those videos wow. those six and then yeah in our kitchen we still don't have a dining room in our house uh and yeah so we did that and then uh and then after six episodes of doing that i was picked up by dreamworks tv and so they six saw episodes of this i'm dara the bow girl <laughs> yeah dreamworks picks you up yeah so and, and badass to fucking the, badass to the question of the bow that was like my decision, my fam, me, my step, my family's decision yes, to pow out about keep this. that going okay, okay. because it was a brand. Wow! And at that point in my life, I was 13, 12, 13 years old. Yeah. I was like, sure, like fun, you know. Yeah. Then you know, for for sixteen years old, and people are like right. making fun of you. It's right. not the best, but it's not. in the time, it was great. And yeah, picked up by DreamWorks TV. I shot 14 episodes with them. You know, I was paid like $700 an episode. And to a 14 year old, I'm like, 700 yeah, and bucks. You should have like, been whew. paid 7000 an episode. <laughs> DreamWorks, well, yo, this girl some money. <laughs> well, no, what's really interesting, and this is like kind of off track, but related to it. So we shot those videos. I was like picked up by DreamWorks, which at the what time. What was the show with DreamWorks? It was called In the Kitchen with Dara the Bow Girl. Oh my goodness. And we shot 14 episodes for. Um, Oh, go Verizon Go 90, which was at the time it was Verizon's like, you know, plea to or uh, they were trying to build like YouTube basically for Verizon, mm. uh, a video platform. And so all those videos were contracted for that platform. Are they still out there? So Ver Verizon Go 90 never happened. Basically, mm. it was up for like a few months and then it disappeared. So I was like, like, I, I have no, paid and I have no ownership of these videos. Right, I don't I know, know where that. they are. Right. A few of them went on to on to DreamWorks TV's like YouTube channel, but all fourteen of the episodes, like they were they weren't there. Um, a few months ago, I looked online, and they're on Amazon Prime oh, no. and Apple TV, so they were sold. Yeah, and that's the thing about this content now that they don't tell you about. It's oh, like yeah. people can people can buy things and. And like they sell things and it's like something that normally if it was cable and it wasn't doing well, it got axed, you never saw it again. Yeah. Now they're pulling it out of the archives and just selling it. Like throw this content up. Yeah. But I, yeah. So. The bow girl. I, yes. But I did. So I did that. That was kind of the extent of my like YouTube, the Dara, the bow girl. So, phase. so if you're rebranding yourself, what, what are you now? You're not the bow girl anymore. I'm, I'm Dara. I'm, yeah. I'm Chef Dara. Well, Chef actually, Dara. I think. The brand that I've kind of been going with, my Instagram handle is Food For You. Yeah. So my name, Dara yeah, You. Yeah, like that. Uh, and so, yeah, I've been using that. And yeah, at this point in my life, and that's why, like, I stepped away from the YouTube and stuff because I was, like, 16 years old going through high school. And I was just like, I want to be independent and I don't want to be, like, labeled Do to you this. got plans and, to go back to the old YouTube and put stuff up or you yeah. got other ideas? Yeah. No, no. I mean, I, plat like, video and stuff, I've always, like, I've always enjoyed it. Yeah. And I've done other video production, like, projects and stuff. Uh, it's funny so, knowing, like, knowing you. But I could have, like, this is where I am. Like, I think I hit, I don't know, 7,000, 8,000 subscribers, something like that. I don't know exactly how much. But I stopped, like, after, uh, af you know, after six videos that we self-produced. And I look back now and I, like, because if we were shooting these videos in 2015, if yeah. I had kept making yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. think about how Big it could have been right, by now. Right, you look at the you look at the little and I could have evolved. You look at the, the little brand. kid, the little kid that opens stuff 
What's his I name? Uh, it, Ryan. It, Ryan. So <gasps> my friends in Hawaii are friends with his really? family because the, like the kids are like the same age. This kid goes to the same school and he's like this little celebrity that goes to school, but he's making a million, ten million dollars yeah. a month opening boxes. Yeah. Like, so I, I yeah. do. I look back on that. I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I had done that. But I was also in this time in my period, my period of time in my life where I wanted to be taken more professionally yeah. in the industry. And I that's, that's when I started movie. working in restaurants. It's going to pay off. It's going to pay off yeah. because, yeah, because like, you know, you're watching it and it's definitely in. It's definitely something that's going to cater to a very much younger audience. Yeah. But I think you have you have the skill and talent to inspire all ages and also teach all ages. I mean, yeah. like I learned from you. I did on like on Master Chef. I was learning from you, and I'm like I don't give a shit if you know something and I don't. I want to learn it from you. Well, I learned that, from you too. I learned right. how to use the compressor. <laughs> yeah. The all oh, the vacuum the, the chamber vac- vacuum. Chamber vac- yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, like that's, but that's the thing about chefs is we all got to work together. I I think, I think any chef out there that's like looking down on another chef because they want to learn or brings their ego into the kitchen is just a chef that's running out of steam, Yeah, you know? And that's the thing. I've been very fortunate to come across uh, some of my mentors and chefs in this industry who I look up to, like they've opened, they've welcomed me with open arms Yeah, and I, it's been great because I've been able to kind of establish myself. Well, and, and I think that's because the industry is changing. I mean, look at what Gordon Ramsay's doing, and, yeah. and and you can see his track record of promoting women in the kitchen. He understands that he understands that's a necessity, um, and so you are. Yeah, I mean, you like that's in your favor this day and age as as being uh, an Asian American woman in the kitchen, like. People want to work with you. Yeah. You, I mean, <laughs> this is the fucking time, right? Yeah. Like, because you, you have a different perspective. You have, you're coming with culture. Like you're, I mean, I got to meet your grandparents and your grandma walks around <laughs> so telling sorry. everybody, no, she walks around telling everybody she's the master chef <laughs> and master chef senior. Yeah. Master chef senior. But like, you know, she probably knows i mean we know she knows some shit oh yeah you know and now like people that are evolving and 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 respecting other cultures are are looking at someone like you and going you are one the future of food uh but also it's cool to learn from someone like you it's not thank you why like why like why i I mean i'm confused at, at any slight to anybody it's like we're all on the same fucking blue dot spinning around a million miles an hour or whatever. Like, it's like, let's just hang out and yeah. cook some food. But like your grandparents, your grandparents are important in your life. I think I mean, my mm-hmm. grandparents are important yeah, in my 100%. life. Yeah, 100%. I mean, the, the, my grandparents are the most important thing in my life. Um, and meeting your grandparents, like they're funny. They're super supportive. Um. And so, yeah, they're, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. They're from New Zealand, New Zealand, Chinese, New Zealand. There's yeah. So, yeah. so they, they migrated from China to New Zealand. Uh, yeah. So my grand, my grandpa, my, this is my maternal side. My, my grandpa was, at, was born in New Zealand, but his parents were born in China. Got it. My grandma was born in exile. So we actually don't know like where her, she, I think she was born somewhere in China, but they don't know like where, cause they were, all, her family was on the run. Wow. Uh, and then they went back to China, but then eventually they went to, to New, Zeal- New, New Zealand. Zealand. So yeah, like my grandparents are, are, are Chinese. Was your mom born up, in New Zealand? Yeah. She, so you're first generation American? Uh, yeah, technically, yeah. Because my my dad was born in China, but grew up in Canada. Wow. So, yeah, and that's the thing too that like I think, I mean, it's caused a little bit of like identity crisis within myself sometimes, but it also like enriches my exactly. knowledge and perspective exactly. on food exactly. and culture and life. I I can relate in a very microscopic way, like uh, obviously not the amount of countries, but like I was born in Florida. But I grew up in Colorado, mm-hmm. and then I went back to Florida for high school. And when I went back for high school, I went to an all-black school. I was like one of four white kids yeah. in an all-black school. 
And then I transferred schools, transferred schools because of baseball, trying to get to a work with a coach. And then when I graduated, I was like, peace out. I'm hitting the road. And then I spent like two years on the road in different states. And like, I don't feel, I mean, I feel like where I was born is like, like my home state, my yeah. hometown. But like, I'm a product of the road. I'm the pro- I'm a product of our entire country. Yeah. And it's like, why, like my Facebook, and it's really interesting after MasterChef, the amount of people that resonated with me, because it's like people of all walks of life. There's Republicans, there's Democrats, there's hardcore liberals, there's mm-hmm. hardcore, like, I mean, there's some people that have said some racist <laughs> shit thinking like I'm down with it. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, yeah. like you got to miss, like, I don't know what that is, but it's like, I see, I see all of it. So it's like. And I, from all over the world. Right. Too. Well, and then there's that. Then yeah. there's all these fans from all over the world. My biggest following is the Philippines. Mine's Indonesia. See? Yeah. Like it's not, it's not the even the The number of like people from Indonesia that would ask for like pictures of my socks. Do you ever <laughs> get that? No. Uh, <laughs> no, I get, yeah. a, I get a like lot when of. When I was like 13 years old. That I was like the number one Facebook message my mom well, like would get. It's a different yeah. story. I get a yeah. lot of like uh, gay males asking for other pictures. Oh, God. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Mine was like, interestingly, like. Turkey, yeah, Turkey, Indonesia, Philippines mm. are like my top following. Yeah. And it's really interesting because like, you know, these are people from walks of life that are completely different from yeah. ours, yeah. but we are able to relate about food, which is like the number one reason I love food is yeah. because everyone eats. We all got to eat. We all got to eat. So why don't we just enjoy it together? So I actually had an interesting conversation with Graham Elliott uh, recently and mm-hmm. and you know, because we were on, we were in Hawaii, we were on the island where cultural appropriation came up a little bit. And I've struggled with this with food because, you know, like Andrew Zimmerman has Chinese restaurants and there's other chefs that have crossed borders and understand cuisine. And Graham said to me, he goes, I like to look at it as it's not cultural appropriation, it's cultural appreciation. Mm-hmm. And I loved that because that's really what it is with food. I mean, we're taking influence f- for from everywhere because the, the best way chefs learn is traveling, working with other chefs. And then we all share. And it's like why Anthony Bourdain, and, you know, he would say that, you know, all chefs are drunks because they don't understand why the world doesn't work like their kitchen. Yeah. And it really feels like that sometimes, right? Like, yeah. we're just sharing. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, like... I mean, I make a better Swiss meringue <laughs> because of you, and <laughs> neither of us are Swiss. Yeah. Right? Oh, 100%. And that's the thing, too, for me, is, like... And actually, one thing, like, one narrative on MasterChef that I struggled with throughout was, like, they were... They want me... They were trying to push the, like, Chinese mm. cuisine, Chinese mm-hmm. perspective for me. And I am... Like, you've I'm, gone to culinary school. I'm you admire going, French no, technique. Like, 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 well, it's not even only that. I love Asian cuisine. That's what I grew up eating, cooking. But for me, it's like I am Asian American. Yeah, I'm a Cali girl to heart. Right. Like, I don't have a lot of connection to my Chinese heritage, which is something that I really want to like work on and 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 learn. But it's hard sometimes when you're put in, into a box. Right. And, and that's the problem. Yeah, and that's, that's the, problem. the problem. Putting so, things in boxes. But I also think that one thing that Master Chef was able to like give us was the ability to get out of that box. Yeah. No, that's a good with our food. Right. Maybe Showing narrative it. wise right. it's different. Yeah. But with our food, it's like at the end of the day, we come up with what we're gonna make. Right. So if you're able to prove to yourself, the judges, your other contestants that like, hey, I can make this bomb Indian dish right. and the judges like it, that right. you know, Hopefully it proves and shows that, yeah. you know, like your skills and, and it, it's the, it's the appreciation. Right. If you can say, you know, I know this dish is not going to be what your Indian grandma makes, of course. but it's a version and that I know how to make and I can, and I can present yeah. and I'm proud of it. Right. Well, and also. Why shouldn't you get respect for that? Exactly. And you're also approaching it with, I know where this dish comes from. I understand that whatever I'm doing to it is does not have the history that someone from this culture has. 
but I appreciate their journey and that I've tried their food. It's like, okay, so it's okay to eat the food, but it's not okay to recreate it. No. Like that's what chefs do. We taste and recreate, put our own spin on. Like yeah. that's that's the amazing thing about it. And I think you're really right about that. Like bringing, uh, we get to do that in the Master Chef kitchen. We get to we get to show that. Uh, Thanks, Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, <laughs> he's smart. He's. I mean, a machine. he has an Asian restaurant. Yeah, he ha- you know, so it's like no one's attacking him about it. But why would there's they? There's probably a hater out there, but like... Ah, I mean, he just sticks the... He's Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, he's going to put the he's bread on both sides of your ears and call you an idiot sandwich. Um, okay, so here's something. you When you were uh, MasterChef Junior, your mom's around. Were you guys sharing a hotel? Yeah, so when I was on MasterChef Junior... Uh, Every kid contestant had one parent there with them. Right. So my mom was with me. We shared a double bed, or d- you know, a okay. room with two beds. Uh, and she was, or the parents were always on set with us. They were with us all the time. COVID wasn't a thing yet. No. So when you got done filming, you and your mom could hang out at the hotel, do whatever you wanted, right? Mm-hmm. Were you allowed to leave the hotel? Uh, we would get like our weekly outings. Yeah, we got outings, <laughs> so, so. right? Season six, yeah. we got outings. Yeah. We They'd go be like, you things. know, Saturday we're going to Thirsty Promenade. Yeah. And- you got yeah. to feel but we get to go to the pool right. or walk around the hotel. Like we filmed this <laughs> during COVID. Yep. We had hundreds of swabs shoved up our noses every other day. And we weren't allowed to leave the fourth, the fourth floor. floor. <laughs> <laughs> we were quarantined to the fourth floor. And those like our you know, it's like you don't want to hang out. Because everyone's competing, but like we needed it. We needed that you interaction. You need the socialization. Yeah. We needed that interaction. So we'd like, we would sit on in the hallway on the fourth floor. We'd order food way more than the per diem because the per diem did not care about yeah. a delivery fee and tipping the driver and the fact that we couldn't even go down and pick it up. Um, they built us a gym. That was nice. They went, it was nice. They, a little they, theater room. They built us a gym. They built us a library. <laughs> Um, did you work out in the gym at all? A few times until I fell, until I fell off the treadmill, but it was another thing. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I won't call you out on it. I won't bring it up, <laughs> but I, I went into the gym one morning, 5 30 AM. And I was like, they got us this gym. I'm going yeah. to go. And I'm running and I've never run on a gym in a hotel. I've never run on a treadmill in a hotel room and the lack of oxygen. <laughs> I mean, you suck up the oxygen so fast. Did you not open the door? No, it was open, but oh. it's not coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like, it's, we're in California. Like, there's no breeze. Yeah. Like, it's just stale air. I'm sweating. And like, I can run like three miles on a gym, on a treadmill, no problem. I'm at like, Three quarters of a mile, and I was about to puke. It was also I, a janky like was janky. treadmill. I, That's why I, I fell the, off of it. I wonder what the people like under us like. We're like, who the? Fuck I think it was is the, it was the production office. So it was, it was okay. under us. Yeah. Ah, they yeah. figured that out. Even though they still got they needed rest, and we're just like running. <laughs> but yeah, we did. I mean, it was nice that we got. It was hard. It was, it was hard, but there were resources. I don't know. For me, I think I'm a very optimistic person. Yeah. And I always like to think of like the best of a, of a uh, opportunity or, you know, yeah. situation. Um, so, yeah. Okay. We didn't get to like go outside and we would yeah. had to sit in a hallway. But like those were some of the best moments for me. Yeah. I don't know. Like. No, I loved them. You know. I mean, I. And it was fun. I enjoyed hanging out in the hallways with you and and and. With you know, with Fred, and it's yeah. like what's really cool about MasterChef that people don't under, that don't really think about, they don't know because it, it's off camera. Is that we're all people that we normally wouldn't hang out if it wasn't for MasterChef, I'd have never met you. Yeah, true. Well, maybe. No, uh, I don't know. Eh, I probably would have reached out on like social media or something. Oh uh, no, I probably would have in the past eight yet. years. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> you hadn't yet. And we would have like ran into each other at Nobu or something. Maybe, yeah, maybe an event eventually, yeah. eventually. But, but like, I get your point. But it would have been it would have been brief. We yeah. had the exchange. We'd have taken a photo. We'd have gone on our merry way because that's yeah. the LA way. Uh, but so sad. it is sad. But because we get shoved on the fourth floor <laughs> for eight weeks, we get to know each other differently, and then and then we become like this Master Chef family, and it's like it's a bond that people just don't understand. Oh, 100%. And that's the thing. Like, I 
even now, like I've had dinner with Fred like three times since. Really? Shooting. Yeah. Like, and can somebody get like, him some utensils for his kitchen? Like, what is he do? He's spinning cakes around on a bowl. It's like, dude, a cake. Oh no, Brie got him a cake stand for oh, his right. birthday. She mailed him one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I mean, that thing's like six bucks. <laughs> like, <know>. dude. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? Hey, you gotta be resourceful sometimes. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, he, yeah, but it's like, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> He's yeah, funny. He Fred, cracks yeah. me up. So Fred, like, obviously I'm not going to be friends with everyone. Like, yeah. we're not going to be friends with everyone, but there are like relationships that you make on the show that are going to be like really strong. And, yeah. and that's relating back to like juniors. Like my best friend, Jules, is from your like season. from my season yeah and she's a like it's because like we relate over this experience Drama buddies. and yeah <laughs> uh but no it is true and like i think most of the viewers they see this competition this narrative that's built by producers and editors yeah. and a lot of the time like there there's truth to a lot of it of course but behind the scenes there's like Ow, and so weeks yeah. of like it could be relationships like, yeah. or conversations that like people will never see. Yeah. And well, and for our show, they're not going to show it. It's like Hell's Kitchen does that. Yeah. You know, Hell's Kitchen yeah, catches yeah, yeah. all that. And it's more, pro- although I think we're way more fun <laughs> behind the scenes because we're not, you know, we're all coming. Yeah, we're not it. being filmed. Like imagine fourth floor with cameras. Oh, God, it would have been insane. <laughs> it would have been insane. Like uh, I heard some, I heard some things. I've heard some things. Oh, yeah. Michael's told me some things. Oh, yeah. I feel like Michael knows a See, lot. See, this than is he... the thing. I liked to socialize with people. It was yeah. nice, you know. But I was in my room by like 10 p.m. You were. You were and good. I was like, you know, I'm not. I'm underage. People were drinking. I was like, I'm not trying yeah. to get anyone in yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. And I enjoyed being in my room outside of you know the social a, a little bit of socialization. But yeah, I did hear some things. <laughs> You want to discuss? I don't. No, no. I don't. I'm going to discuss them with those people. Yeah, you should. I'm like, yo, Christian, I heard this. <laughs> Which, this is what's also really funny is like, because there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that, they're, like, then it it's it's not replicated, but it's. It causes something it causes, on yeah, camera, which, which no one understands. No one understands is yeah. like what the reason behind it yeah, is, yeah. and it's completely different than like what they're beefing on TV about. Yeah, yeah. I got ganged up on. Um, uh, one day, shell. I, w- I went to go use. I went into the library to go use the micro- microwave. Oh yes. And I, I walk in, this. and there's a chat going on about me. I overhear it. Like I walk in on it and it was kind of like everyone was like deer in the headlights. And I don't know who was the deer and who was the headlights, but we were all in shock because I wasn't supposed to be in that room at that moment. And then they like backpedaled and they're like, what are you saying in your interviews? I'm like, I'm saying what I'm supposed to say in my interviews. I'm fucking talking. Like, why are you worried about my interviews? Yeah. Like, cause they're asking us questions about you. And I'm like, that's how it goes. (laughs) Yeah. So fucking step up. What? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. But uh, Shelly was Shelly was upset because like they brought up some shit from our season, and I'm like, look, you fucked up on our season, and now it's carried into this season. Well, also, like I think a lot of people <laughs> like you, we knew what we were getting ourselves into. Yeah, but you like I'm like Shelly, you so, don't. I'm like you don't think they're gonna talk about season six when you blatantly threw me under the bus after I saved you, and then you're gonna go do it again? Like, come on, like yeah. what are you thinking? Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, they were all like, they were all pissed off at me, and I'm like, whatever. And then they, you know, it didn't work out for them. Yeah. Um, and those situations happen throughout throughout the season, and like shooting and stuff. And like, yeah. what's interesting, what was always interesting for me is like, I'd hear about it either like the day after, or like I'd get a little glimpse of it, and then I would get, pieces, you know, from ev- yeah. pieces from everyone else. That's funny. And I was just like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I still. Well, I actually can't talk I, about that. But. I was, I was, I was just really pissed that I like I walked in and like, it was, who it was, and what they were saying, and I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah. You guys are just trying to form. I I, I immediately you went hold back. grudges though. I do. You I do. hold grudges. There was a few times where I had to be like Derek, just let it go. 
Yeah, like, well, I did, that's they're going to be gone tomorrow. Just let it go. That's something about me. I mean, I went back and I, te- I texted oh, yeah. I texted Michael. I was like, they're forming an alliance against me. <laughs> I know. I remember I went in the next day and there was like, there's this alliance. And I was like, yeah. what alliance? I'm just here to cook yeah. mac and cheese. <laughs> like, what? They're missing so much content. Yeah. But, you know, that's... See, but I knew you were a threat. And that's why I was keeping you close. I didn't have beef with you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I knew that. But no one else was looking at you as a threat because they were like, she's a master chef junior. Yeah. Everyone was looking at me as this threat because I was this runner up that everyone was like, you got robbed. And you have a big personality and, and, they, and you were put at the top a lot. Too. Yeah. And they wanted to send well me deserved. home. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're just like sneaking through. And I'm like, hello, everyone look at Dara. <laughs> she's making cakes better than production. <laughs> Yeah. I think that was a wake up call for a lot of people, though. Your cake was fucking epic. Yeah, I think, like, I think. Speaking of, what's this box told... you got over here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, Jared, can you kind of cheat to the left side <sighs> a little bit so we can just get your Okay. A little bit more? Yes. This way? Yeah. I, I, brought, I, brought, I brought treats because that's what I do. So, See, this is how I win everyone over. <laughs> like, this is how, like, in high school and, like, I made friends. I was like, I'm cookies. Gonna, I'm going to bake you cookies. stuff. Cookies. Okay. Yes, I made some cupcakes. You made these? Yeah, of course. My goodness. Wait. <laughs> no, I went to Costco. No, I understand, but you have... the. I mean, the box looks amazing. What kind... Okay, pass this over. What is this? Um, So... In the microphone, what is this? As you probably do uh, as well, I, I lay in bed at night and I think about... like Food? R- food and recipes. Yeah. Um, God, this smells sweet. So this is one thing... It, it, it might be a little sweet. Um, Not too sweet, though. It's a... So it's a chocolate what is it <laughs> it's a chocolate rye cupcake with a uh, malted milk Blah. Dara you're on a cooking <laughs> show where you know, present your food I what? know the Dara. number of do I need to say like no. Gordon Ramsay Dara what is this okay, what here, is right. this we'll do it we'll do it alright today I have prepared for you you uh, don't have an accent what is this <laughs> accent <laughs> today I no uh, yeah so it's a uh, chocolate rye cupcake with a uh, malted dark milk chocolate buttercream. Mm. So yeah, the butter it's it's a little warm, but yeah, I don't know. It was something that I was just like. Also, I made these last night at like midnight because that's what I do. I lay in bed, mm. try and go to sleep, and then I'm like, no, I gotta make cupcakes. That's good. See, mm. when I was in like, well, me- I got I brought you something too. <laughs> Your very first, very own Epic Mega Cookie. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <gasps> Let me see. Yeah. Is this the Valentine's Day one? No. It's the s'mores. Oh, the s'mores. Because it's going to be way past Valentine's Day. Oh, when yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I love my s'mores. The <laughs> Valentine's one is selling like crazy. Oh, though. no, this is awesome. I'm so excited. And that was the thing when you told me you were like, hey, I have a cookie company, I was like, what? I was like, like, what's this private chef trying to do in the baking world? I was you're like, like, wait, what? He, he get can out bake? of here. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm very excited. Thank you. Yo, you know how much, how much dessert you make in the private chef world? I know. God, I know. I see, those, I see the stuff you post. My client wants cakes and pies and cookies all the time. Well, if, you, not, don't, if you don't feel like making them. No, I do. I like me. making them. I like making them. They're great. No. They're amazing. Yeah. No, it's fun. And, and Okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, since we've had some sugar, are you ready to play a game? A game. I'm yeah. always ready to play games. We got to play a game, and then okay. we'll wrap this up. All right. <laughs> All right, so in true chef fashion, blind taste test. I'm surprised we never had to do a blind. I was ready. I was ready, too. I was surprised we didn't oh, have to well, do it. Guess what? Now you okay, get to, now you get to do <laughs> it. I don't know how good I am at this. We're going to find out. Steven failed miserably. Easy one first. Oh, and, oh no, no, no. You got to open up. I'm feeding you. No, you got to open your mouth. I'm feeding oh. you. Oh. <laughs> Ready? Open your mouth. <laughs> open your mouth. <laughs> okay. Oh. Why am I blinking? I know exactly what this is. <laughs> then what is it? <laughs> I don't know why I'm like... I know exactly what it is. Why am I like... My brain is not working. It's red, pep- red pepper. It's bell pepper. Bell pepper. Good job. It was yellow. I don't know it, why I was thinking like cucumber. Woo. I was like. All right, here we go. Next one. Open up. <laughs> this 
me. Wow. This is this true? Like when you, like I know what the taste is, but without seeing it, like my brain gets confused. Really? Yeah. That's an easy one. Come on. I know it's a fruit. What if I said it was a vegetable? It's strawberry. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to toughen it up real quick. Oh. And open up. You chew different foods differently. <laughs> I'm trying different techniques. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I've had it before, but I don't know what it is. Give up? Mm. Stumped on this one? Some type of fruit. Oh. Mm. I'd be impressed if you get this. It's not, it's, it's not like an Asian pear, is it? Very close. Mm. I don't know what it is. Star fruit. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. Okay. But it does. It's like texture of like Asian pear. Yeah. Okay, next one. Ready? Open up. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's not that bad. It was just surprising. Uh, is that, um, it's not a kumquat, is it? Yeah! Oh, it is? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a seed. Okay. This one. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Uh. Open up. <laughs> <laughs> just sm smashed it with your tongue to the roof of your mouth? Is it just mouth? like apple like jelly? Like, Is it Kins paste? What is that? Cranberry sauce. Oh, eh. oh yeah, I should have guessed that. <laughs> this is a thing. I'm bougie with my cranberry sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this I is. I never grew up like eating canned the cranberry canned sauce. The canned one. Okay. All right, last one. Ready? Open up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Give her the ball. Here. I, I hate you. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, I hate cottage cheese so much. Well, you got it right. <laughs> Literally tastes like you're drinking like soured milk. Like oh. why? <laughs> why, right? Uh, hey, that was pretty good. I got what? Like five out of six? Am I done? Wait. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, you got. Oh, no, I got like four out of six, I think. Good job. That was fun. That was fun. God, I had it. I, you know, when you said uh, I don't like cottage cheese, I was like, oh, I got to give her cottage mm. cheese. My, I had my first grade teacher. Uh, this is such a random story. My first grade teacher would dr like every day have a bowl of cottage cheese with like fruit and stuff in it. And I never understood. And the smell too. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, was I can't. I I'm was, a very textural person. Yeah. It's and a the gross clumps, texture. Yeah, it's clumpy. Repulsive. You're a good sport. Repulsive. You're a good okay. sport. I owe you one. Thank that you. was actually the the um the kumquats were good. The bell pepper was surprising, right? See, it's like until you like lose your vision of yeah, it, yeah. you can you're like, oh I've had this before. But, I'm but like, what, is, what it? is it? Right. Chef That life. was fun. That was fun. Yeah. They they should do that like on Master That would be a really good challenge. That would be an interesting challenge. They're twelve seasons, they don't give a shit. Know. They're like make vegan food. Okay. <laughs> what else you got going on? You've been working <sighs> you've been working at a bakery. Yeah, so uh, see, I'm in a very transitional place right now in my life. So yeah. um yeah, so right now like I'm helping out at a few of my friends' bakeries, kind of just helping them when they need to. You extra say helping help. out, are they paying you? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Oh no, I don't work for free no more. Um, <laughs> I started off working for free, but um no, I'm helping out some of my friends at bakeries, um, but then I'm also teaching. Uh so I started working at a recreational cooking school when I was fifteen. Okay. I had to get like a special work permit for that. As a kitchen assistant, worked there all throughout high school until I went to college, uh, and now I'm back as an instructor. So it's Amazing. fun, and yeah, so I'm doing that, and that's like, it, it's great because I'm I'm teaching, and so I'm having to like think as a teacher now instead of like as a assistant or as a chef, and right. yeah, so I'm doing that, and then yeah, teaching working. Teaching at the age of 20. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. I taught a six-year-old's birthday party yesterday. Mm. It was a whew, disaster. Was, oh my, no, it would turn out great. Oh, good. Got a hundred, two hundred dollar tip. Great, but it was like 
I was, you have, when, when you're dealing with kids and one thing that I didn't realize, like when I was like, okay, yeah, I want to teach their kids. attention span you is have, short. You, well, their attention span is short, but you have to have the patience mm -hmm. for three hours and mm -hmm. you have to keep get in the room back to you and you, like, you spent three hours with six-year-olds yeah what's wrong with you you don't have to do Money, that Money getting that bag that's not the bag you want oh my god i mean hourly i'm being paid yeah pretty good but anyways doing that right now and i'm working and um starting to develop some like projects and stuff that i've been wanting to do for a while and just awesome. haven't had the time to cool yeah well when you can talk about them uh, come back on. Talk about that. No, I will. Of course. Okay. What's your Instagram? We got to make sure we're yes. all following that. Uh, yeah. So my Instagram is at food for you, spelled Y-U. Y -U. Yeah. My right. last it's name. Cute. Yeah. Branding it. I always said if yeah. I wanted, if I did a restaurant, I'd call it the Fox Den. Yeah, that was good. But like, uh, this, this I world. had this restaurant concept growing up that I was like, it was going to be called you. And the whole thing was like, you'd go in and it was like... <laughs> Essentially, just like Chipotle or something. <laughs> like oh you pick God. what you want. You and pick your what you want. But it was like fancy. I don't know. So I, that's why I think it's funny when people get so excited about Korean barbecue. Like I love it, but you're cooking your food. I love like, it still. Oh, I love it too. Yeah. But we know how to cook. It's the IKEA of food. We know how to cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People that go there and like just make rubber. <laughs> And they're like, I love Korean barbecue. <laughs> and they're like, well, oh, we yeah. have this place in Hawaii that did all A5. Oh. There's a place in New York that does that. It's like all you can eat. But it was all A5. Wagyu. How much was it? Oh, we, I don't know. We spent like 500 bucks. Yeah. 500 bucks to grow my own food. <laughs> yeah. Dara, thank you for making the drive up. Um, thank you. I really appreciated talking with you and, and learning uh, about your journey. And, you know, we're runner up for life. Runner, runner ups runner for up life. Runner up for life. Uh, Winners in our, in our hearts. Yeah. In each other's hearts. And there's, <laughs> and there's wins out there to be won. Um, but yeah, you're a winner. Always. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in to A Bunch of Losers with me, Derek Fox. Uh, please comment below. Uh, if you guys have questions for any of these guests, I'm sure they would love to answer. And I'll answer as well. So... Let me know below. Also, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, and then also make sure you're following us on Instagram, A Bunch of Losers with Derek Fox, so you get the update on the new episodes. We will be launching them weekly. All right. Thanks, losers. Action.